Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can quickly generate crowds and define parameters such as range, spacing, direction, and more. We'll also cover how you can use different actors and motions for different visual results. If you're not familiar with crowd simulation yet, please check out the Getting Started tutorial first. Let's start off with how to generate a crowd. You'll find Generate Crowd under Scatter in the Create menu and also on the toolbar. You'll want to first determine how you want to spawn your crowd via the Create Volume or Pick Object method. If you choose Create Volume, you'll need to click and drag in the viewport to determine the initial size of the volume dummy. Once you have it created, it can be moved, scaled, and rotated. If you use the Pick Object method, you can choose a prop such as the Street Prop or a Nav Mesh like the one here, indicated by the blue area. Walkways can also be set, and you can add and remove multiple objects from the spawn region as well. If you use the volume preset or objects other than a nav mesh to set the initial spawn region, actors may be generated outside of the defined region, like with this volume I created. However, if I check the optimized nav mesh box, it will restrict the generated actors to strictly within the defined volume. In terms of generation type, you can choose random or formation. Each one has different parameters to utilize under the options section. Both have the amount and spacing parameters, which are pretty self-explanatory. Larger amount means more individuals in the crowd, while a higher spacing value means they'll be more spaced out within the defined region. A higher spacing value will override the number of actors that can be generated within the spawn region. Orientation will determine the direction the actors are facing according to degree, and random orientation refers to the degrees of randomness. If you pick a path or walkway as a spawn region, you'll also see a direction ratio option, which determines the ratio of actors that will be facing the start or end point of the path. Okay, now that we've covered the basic generation settings, let's look at how we can create a walking crowd simulation. To easily add actors to your actor pool, you can click and drag them from the content manager to the crowd generation window. You'll want to ensure that you set tags to match the appropriate motions to each actor. You can also assign specific motions or IMDs to each actor. In the case where you're using an IMD, be aware that there are additional custom parameters you can set. Motions and IMDs can be imported via the Content Manager the same way as your actors. You'll also want to set the appropriate tags for your specific IMDs as well. You have the option to save and load your settings as well, and once you're done, go ahead and click on Deploy Actors to get your actors into your project. When using Actor Core Actors with multiple material options, ensure that you enable Deploy with Variant Materials. This will randomly apply different material options for the same actor. You can also set the ratio for each actor as well. A higher ratio value will generate more of that particular actor compared to the others. It's important to note that actors generated using CrowdGen are light actors, which are optimized to utilize less system resources and increase performance. If you want to edit them, you'll need to switch over to edit mode, and then back to light mode when you're done. Okay, let's look now at creating standing crowds into formation, suitable for simulating audiences that aren't moving around. In this case, using the formation generation type is ideal. The parameters here are pretty basic. X and Y amount determine the numbers and rows of columns respectively. There is also X and Y distance to determine the uniform spacing between each, and you can also lock the Y value here to the X one. There is also X and Y offsets to move the array along those axes, and the density parameter will determine how dense the crowd is, with a value of 1 meaning it's fully populated. The stagger parameter is useful for creating a slight offset in the distribution making it less uniform. 
Unlike with random generation type, with formation type, the orientation parameter will rotate the entire array, as opposed to individual actors. But random orientation will affect the facing direction of each actor. You also have the option to enable Add Focal Point to synchronize the direction each actor is facing. Right-click to exit this mode, after which you can move the alignment dummy around to update the focal point position. When there are multiple focal points, each actor will face the closest one. Once you're ready, click on Generate Placement to bring your actors into the project. As with the previous example where the actors were moving around, we have the option to bring in multiple IMD or motion files from the Content Manager. If your actors are meant to be standing in place, definitely be sure to only use stationary motions. You can determine the combination number to allow an actor to utilize multiple animations that match its tags. If you use this, you'll want to set a good number of frames to blend the multiple motions as well. Results will vary here based on the combination of motions used. Random start frame will ensure more disparity in the start time of each motion. Otherwise, you may have multiple actors starting the same motion at identical times. Finally, you have the option to loop the motions. When this is selected, the number of repetitions for each motion will be disabled. After generating your crowd, you also have the option to go in to tweak the position and rotation of each actor individually. In the Scatter menu under Create, there is also a Prop Distribution option. Here I'm picking this path as the spawn region where I want to distribute the props. Similar to crowd generation, you have the option here to set the various parameters we went through, and click and drag your prop in from the Content Manager. This is a quick and intuitive way to generate things like a set of guardrails here, using a path and various customizable parameters. That's it for this crowd generation tutorial guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.